Oh yeah, what's up guys? It's Curse Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I got some more tips that I want to share with you using heartbeat moments. And in particular, I want to go over a video by John Yushe. I'm not sure if I said that right. Yushe, Yushe, I'm not sure. But uh, in a nutshell, he went over seven really, really good tips that he got in his interview with Mr. Beast. Now, I believe five of them are very, very valuable for newer and smaller YouTubers. So I've gone ahead and made a whole bunch of different moments. A couple of these uh, tips require a couple of heartbeat moments. But if you join me in this, I'm going to show you some of the best parts and some of the best moments and the best things you can do to grow as a YouTuber in 2024, according to Mr. Beast. So, you know, what does he know? <laughs> All right, guys, join me. Let's roll. All right, so here I am in Heartbeat and H.KI if you want to follow along or sign up. And uh, again, it's free, but on the left side, you're going to see here my heartbeat. I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to click on moments. And under moments, you're going to see here that I've got nine moments for Mr. Beast tips for 2024. And this was through a interview that John and uh, Mr. Beast here had. And it looks like they're buddy buddy. So, hey, it's got to be good. And to be honest with you, there's seven really great tips. Five of them, I believe, are important for small YouTubers. So let's get started here with the first one. Limit your Lamborghinis. Click on it. Limit your Lamborghinis. And I'll explain what that means in a second. But it comes from this fascinating moment from my interview with Mr. Beast, which, by the way, make sure you subscribe because you're not going to want to miss the full sure. video when I drop it. But basically, he showed me all these internal drafts that it took to go from an initial idea to a final thumbnail. Take yeah. me through what is this that we're looking Check at this here, out. Jimmy. These weren't A-B tests. Obviously, some of the first ones are kind of terrible. So basically what he's going to show you here is the thumbnail process. So you generally come up with an idea for a thumbnail and watch how intricate and how detailed uh, this is. Uh, but it just shows all the different ones we went through until we landed on the, the one we ended up uploading. Help. Now this isn't obviously, you know, something that a YouTuber with maybe like four subscribers and that's going to get maybe 10 views might not want to go through this process. Maybe you do, I don't know. But here is the first one, right? You just limit your Lamborghinis. And what does that mean? Check this out. Help me roast the earlier versions. Like, because I think for you, maybe it's intuitive, like how you got from point A to B. Like, what are yeah. some of those most obvious changes? Well, the top middle one, you know, in, in theory, your gut would be like, having six Lamborghinis looks cool. Yeah. But then it's like hard to process it and you can't see it. I'm a big fan of simplicity. Just Fair. get it across where they instantly understand it. And mm -hmm. so like, to me, one big Lamborghini in the middle, which obviously is what we went with, so much better than like a driveway covered in Lamborghinis because yeah. it's not, it's so much harder to process. So that is essentially it is. If you have a busy thumbnail, not as good. You want to have it simplified, and he'll talk about this later. Sometimes you want to keep it to three major elements. So there you go. Let's skip forward a little bit more with less is more and the 18% test. Check this out. Real world, obviously six Lambos are better than one, but a yeah, YouTube thumbnail less is more. And one thing I like to try is to see if my thumbnail passes what I like to call the 18% test. So shrink your Photoshop canvas, or whatever you're using to design your thumbnail down to 18%, which helps you identify what a viewer will actually see, especially on mobile. So that is a very, very, very good point. And especially as mobile devices are beginning, are, they've already taken over the world generally, but uh, they're now really, really taken over the world. And, you know, more than half of the views for most YouTube videos are on mobile devices. So when we create a thumbnail, if you create it using a large 1920 by 1080 and you create it on a desktop software, keep in mind that the 18% test is like, this is what it's going to look like on a mobile device. So shrink your canvas down to 18%. That is really what you're working with. Keep that in the back of your head. It's a great tip. Let's skip forward a little bit here. Uh, let's go to this one here. Take ideas from non-YouTube sources. This is a great point from uh, John here. Off YouTube to succeed on YouTube. Now so look off YouTube to succeed on YouTube. Sorry, I, I missed the first word there. My bad, sorry, George. Now look, I'm not saying you shouldn't study other YouTubers, but if that's all you do and you dismiss content from Hollywood because it's too traditional, then you're losing out on so many ideas that could set you apart. Case yep. in point, I was shocked to learn that actually this thumbnail idea for Mr. Beast's video was actually sparked from his team watching a scene from an Apple TV show called Severance. How did this go from well, a thumbnail idea what, to find? Yeah, check this out. One of my thumbnail guys, Chucky, watched Severance, and one of the opening shots is that uh, image in the top middle. He's like, we should do this for a thumbnail. And I was like, 
what does that even mean? And he sent me that Snapchat with a circle and a human. And I was even more confused, the image in the top right. And yeah. I was like, Chucky, I, I don't know, maybe you're drinking alcohol, even though he doesn't. Um, and, uh, and somehow that led to this thumbnail we ended up doing here in the bottom right. So there you go. So again, this is a little bit about thumbnails, but you know, from a general idea of something you see in a video, in a movie, on a billboard, in, a, you know, in your home, you can take that idea and then go through a process like this and a T process, which a T sheet, which I'll show you in a second, and uh, you can get to a final uh, thumbnail or a final video idea. So let's keep going here. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit here to 347, where he talks about TV shows, billboards, and movie posters. This is very interesting. Billboards and movie posters. And in fact, this thumbnail I made is actually from a billboard for the Spy Kids movie. I mean, I'm not even ashamed to say I was driving and I literally made a U turn, parked, <laughs> and took a bunch of photos of that billboard to add to my ongoing thumbnail Hall of Fame folder. So, so there you go. Just another way, another thing to think about. If you see something in life that, you know, is interesting to you, you can sometimes transfer that into your creative world, into your YouTube making world. Now, the next one here is recreating TV shows. I know this is crazy, but it might sound crazy, pardon me, but check this out. And then think about some of your favorite YouTubers and how they're doing this. Well, video formats. Think about what creators like Eric are doing. They're really just recreating Big Brother from TV or the True. Sidemen's Tinder in real life. That's really just MTV's Next recreated or even my on the street videos, which have gotten millions of views. Those are just Tonight Show segments like Jay Leno's Jaywalking recreated. So basically what I'm saying is study traditional media past and present because there's so much opportunity to apply to YouTube before others catch on. So look at that. If you are at a creative you know, crossroads and you're not sure what to do, watch TV, watch movies, look at what's worked before in traditional media. Think of books. What books are out there? All those people that are writing, that are doing YouTube story videos, they're getting their ideas from books, right? Uncle John's bathroom reader, top fives. You don't need to be a genius to see what's happening here. Uh, so think about that and maybe, maybe that's where you get your next YouTube channel idea or your new YouTube video. So let's skip forward a fair bit here. Let's talk about T-sheets and let's see how, uh, well, a guy like Mr. Beast has a storyboard artist. Yeah, because he can afford to have one or many, but using T-sheets. And this is how Zach King came up with some ideas that got him to 20 million. Check this out. T-sheets to brainstorm videos. Now, Jimmy talked about how he's hired storyboard artists to draw his ideas out, but I want to talk about how we could do that even if we can't hire or have the budget. We have a full-time sketch artist. It's like, before I even put an idea on the calendar, we sketch out what the thumbnail will be like. Yeah. Usually we'll sketch out a couple of versions and, and figure out what the title is. This helps make sure what I'm envisioning isn't just dumb. Okay, so he goes through that process at the beginning. You sketch out your thumbnail, and if you know how to draw, <laughs> big advantage. Let's get going though, and let's see what the Zach King does here. You know. Okay, so a much more budget-friendly way to do this is something I learned from my interview with Zach King, who explained this amazingly simple tool called T-Sheets that helped him grow to 20 million subscribers. And I'll let Zach break it down here in a second, but basically it's a way to quickly visualize your ideas and share with others for specific feedback. Okay, so I'm gonna skip forward to the T-Sheet. Check this out. The half by 11 paper with a T written across, and then you've got a synopsis on one side, a picture on the other and a title on the top. Mm. And that's just to help all kinds of learners. You have people who read, you have people that just, for me, a visual learner, I see like an image and I get the concept. Now watch uh, him implement. Easier. And then you also come up with like that memorable top line title yeah. that is almost like, it's not YouTube title ready, but it's just to give you an essence and sometimes it's very memorable. Mm. So there you go, that's the T-sheet method. These are some of the things that, I, I mean, some of these things I'm going to implement right away, the T-sheet method. Uh, in particular, and looking at the traditional media. But there you go, guys. This is Mr. Beast. That's some of his suggestions, some ideas that you may want to take away from this and take to your own personal channels. Guys, that's it for this one. I've got a ton more stuff coming up. Stay tuned. Be back soon.